Ooh, what's up guys? I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. If you're new here, this channel bridges the gap between video game and sim drifting and real life drifting. Here we do both and if you're into one and want to get into the other, I encourage you to consider subscribing. Also check the description for our Discord where if you want to learn about how to go from one to the other, we have plenty of folks in there who have done one or both and they can help you out. Last month I was really busy with real life drifting. I went out to New Mexico for a multi-day event. I drifted in Oklahoma and I also had the privilege of translating for D1 Grand Prix legend who's now retired as of this season, Ken Nomura or Nomuken. So it was a very busy month for me last month but I'm glad to be back behind the wheel of my sim. So let's do some virtual damage. Today we're going to be driving a car that I'm really looking forward to trying. I've heard a lot of suggestions for it, and that is the Street Heroes 180SX RPS 13. I'm going to be using the Spec 90s S2, and I'm uh, pretty stoked on the look of the car. It actually looks fairly similar to my car, just uh, instead of wide body fenders, it has uh, flares. But it's got the old school B Wave style wing, got a rocket in red, just like my car. So, looking forward to that. And then our track will be Sumi Pseudo Kart. Oof, not enough turbo power. And it transitions kind of slowly. But I've got a lot to get used to here. Here's the parts that flow well. It definitely takes all that the car has got to get around the track. Stalled it. Didn't quite have as much angle as I thought that I did. Yeah, this car is all right. I'm probably gonna have to turn out the boost to drive it the way that I'm used to though. And I parked it. So I can say as a first impression that this car transitions kind of strangely to me. It ends up kind of creeping past where I think is gonna be the stable point and heading over to like full on max lock before I expect it to, so I've got to drive it a little bit cautiously to make sure that that doesn't happen. Not on throttle quite as much as I would like to be, but that happens when you're being cautious with a car because there again I hit max angle and just about lost it. Ooh, Man, I am so dead. Alright, so another thing about this car compared to some of the cars that I drive at this track is it slides a little bit farther before the tires pick up traction. Which is not necessarily... Oh, first gear. Idiot. Which is not necessarily a uh, criticism, but if the car drives like that, you do have to adapt. Come on! <laughs> All the clutch kicks. Let's see what happens if we turn this turbo up to 80%. Go too far outside. Kind of a mess, a little understeer there. Full lock. Some clutch kicks to keep the car happy. Oh man, 
I'm a little rusty as well. It's just been a while since I've been back in the seat. So here we're going to use pretty aggressive foot brake. That was actually too aggressive, which is often the case with Sims for me, where I have a difficult time feeling the balance, and I just have to kind of trial and error my way to it. But in these transitions, I have to be really careful with how much I give the car, because if I give it too much, then it's just going to end up way too far sideways for me to drive it. And it will be in this kind of unrecoverable slow spin condition. So even with the boost turned up to 80%, this car still takes a little bit of getting used to. When a car in drift transitions and changes directions, it does so at a certain rate of speed. So there's a few points where you can control that rate of speed uh, and what you do at those key points determines where you're going to end up in the next half second or second. So it's really important uh, when you're learning a car and feeling it out to get those moments right. So if you're going around a corner in this direction, let's say, and you're gonna transition to the right, initially what you do here when the car is ready to transition, that's how much you, you know, aggressively steer towards the other direction to help the car whip, whether you cause the weight shift by letting off the throttle or by stabbing the brakes, whether you transition on throttle or not, is going to throw the car into the transition a certain amount. And no matter what you do after that, it's going to kind of go at a set rate for a period of time. You can try to control it, but you need to get that right. And if you miss by too much, then those are the instances where the car just snaps into a spin really hard because you just gave it way too much, or the car straightens out and grips up because you didn't give it enough. And then once you're in the middle, you can generally kind of wait, do a little bit with the throttle and a little bit with the steering to either encourage it to continue to come around more, uh, discourage it from coming around much more, or just kind of stay on coast and it will continue to go around until what you threw here runs out of momentum somewhere over here. So with this car, that's one of the things that I'm struggling with, and those are the things that I'm adjusting in order to try and get my transitions uh, suited a little bit better to how this car transitions and how much angle that it has so that I don't spin it or more likely stall it by throwing too much angle and basically whipping it, and then I have to wait to keep from spinning, and it causes it to basically park, which if I had somebody behind me would cause an accident in sim or in real life. So I'll try to show you guys that as we go here. We'll start off easy and come in here. And as we're coming around, how hard I transition, I'm just gonna do it real easy by letting off the throttle. I didn't do any special uh, steering into the turn to cause it to whip here again. That time I did stay in throttle. Ooh, that was too much. <laughs> But this flowy part, we can really play with it. So we're gonna transition gently, wait, give it a clutch kick. That was all too much. And so I had to kind of wait longer than I wanted to because I got to the maximum angle that the car had. That wasn't terrible. Um, Granted, this is all hard to do while talking. And I've got to be really vigilant on that clutch so that I can make sure that the car gets enough power oh, to make it up the hill. Oh man, as a V8 driver in real life, at least recently, I mean I've driven low displacement cars too, uh, but as a primarily V8 driver in real life, it does take a little bit of, oh no boost, a little bit of work to remember how to drive low displacement or leggy turbo cars. I'm not using the steering to make the drift any faster in terms of the transition. So I'll show you that here, like if I steer in like that, 
it'll actually make it transition faster. I wasn't positioned in such a way that that was a, a smart thing to do, and so it sent me kind of into the wall when I needed to be making the car turn and not go towards the wall. There we go, parking the car again with too much angle. But you can choose to snap the wheel towards the direction you're going to transition like that, and it will speed the transition up. But this car doesn't have the angle to really require that because it immediately hits lock and then you kind of have your hands tied and you're just along for the ride. Sometimes another way that you can speed that transition along is by using the brake pedal. So if we come up here and we pump the brakes just beforehand, it will cause the car to transition really hard. One way that you can slow that down is to pump the brakes in the middle when the car is facing straight ahead and it will generally cause the car to transition slower. So if you're going from here to here, if you pump the brakes here as the car is passing through, it will actually slow the car down and it, instead of going really fast, it'll slow that transition down a little bit for that second half. Let me try that here. So that actually causes the car to kind of stop transitioning as fast. I'll do it again. Of course, that was a little too hard, and this section of the track is so slow that this car can barely stay in power. But you get the idea. So those are a couple of ways that you can speed, speed up and slow down your transitions. Another way you can speed up your transition especially if you have a car that is struggling for power, is to clutch kick in the middle of the transition. So the opposite of that braking technique I was just demonstrating, you can just give it a clutch kick right in the middle as it transitions instead. Now in order for that to matter, you would have probably been doing an on-throttle transition. And on-throttle transitions in general cause the car to either speed up in transition, or they cause the car to retain more of its momentum as it changes directions for longer. As we come up here to some of the more flowy sections of the track, I'll show you my off-throttle on transition style. That's going to slow the transition down or allow it to slow down, so we come off, wait, catch it, and then get back on throttle once we catch it. And that's the bread and butter for my style of drifting. As we come off, and then we roll back in, and if it's a lower power car, we roll back in with clutch kicks in order to make sure that we can keep the drift going. What's up, Wall? <laughs> so, what are my thoughts on this car? Well, I like it. It is an old school 90s, 2000s, kind of early era looking drift car. It's got the radical B-Wave wing, which I really enjoy. My car's got that as well. Kind of a polarizing thing, either you love it or you hate it. But for me, it just exudes like 90s street racer, old school, kind of like new retro. And that's, I'm about it. So it looks very cool and it drives the way it looks. It is period correct. And what I mean by that is it has a decent amount of angle, way more than a stock S13 would have but it doesn't have that much angle. It's got as much as you need, but nothing extra, which means if you drive like I do, being used to a big angle kit, you do not have any margin for error. And so either you need to drive it with a little bit less angle and tiptoe around, which I've done some of the time, or you need to be very accurate and not mess up, which I've also done some of the time, and other times you've seen what happens if you go too far. You just don't have any room to uh, overdrive this car because once you hit the limit of its angle that's pretty much that you uh, have to get out of throttle and either fail to link the course or spin the car but it feels good to drive with the boost turned up I really enjoy the uh, power it transitions a little strangely for me um, like the actual transition part is fine but I guess what I mean is it keeps going uh, a little bit like there. It keeps going a little bit more than I think it's going to. So a lot of the mod cars that I have been driving 
just seem to have a little bit more rear grip in transition. And as a result, I keep finding myself overdoing it with this car. But yeah, I do enjoy this car. It is fun to drive, although it's gotten super challenging in the last little bit. I think I've worn out the rear tires, and so I have to be quite gentle on the throttle in transition, or I just spin the heck out of it. But uh, yeah, I encourage you to check out this car, and if you haven't ever played Sumi Pseudo Kart 2018, I highly recommend this track. It is so much fun. And if you want to find it, there will be links down in the description of this video for this car, at this track, as well as an invitation to the Kame Trick Discord server. If you're on Discord, it's a great resource where you're going to be able to find guys who have a lot of experience with sim drifting. They can help you get into it, help you spec out your setup. You'll also find guys who have experience with drifting in real life. They'll be able to help you uh, with setup for your real car, or if you want to come out and spectate an event, they can help you find events in your area or let you know what chassis are going for decent deals in your part of the country or world. And you'll also find a few guys like me who do both, and it's really fun to talk shop with those guys. You can really get into the nitty gritty about how certain parts of sim relate to IRL and, you know, things like that. So I hope to hear from you down in the comments of this video, as always, but also uh, to join in those conversations happening on the Discord server. Don't forget to leave a like and let me know what you want to see next time now that we're doing a little bit more sim drifting here on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Peace.